everyone, you are looking at Holy Green Park. And the beautiful flowers blooming around the fountain. The buildings surrounding the Bowling Green. And I am here today to talk to you about the first ever recorded voyage of a submarine, the Bushnell Turtle. And um, I say the first ever recorded journey of a submarine because it's possible somebody did this before the summer of 1776 when the Bushnell brothers deployed their submarine in New York Harbor for the Battle of New York. Um, but I don't know. So um, I'm going to just say that this is the first ever recorded version. So as you guys start joining me, please say hello. Tell me where you're watching from uh, so I know who's here. And we're going to start our our story today here at the Bowling Green and in at the southern tip of the island of Manhattan. And right in front of me is the old um, fountain, uh, which is no longer in use. But we're going to pretend that none of these buildings around us are here. So I want you to imagine that all of these buildings here are fading away. And you're seeing on the left a row of beautiful English style townhouses. And on the right, and looking up to the north, just a dirt country lane going up through the city of New York. And uh, the year is 1776. In front of us is a pedestal. Good morning, Mr. and I think it's afternoon now. I'm so confused. Mr. and Mrs. McCabe, thank you for joining me. In front of us is something that Mr. McCabe enjoyed the story about, I'm sure the pedestal where there once stood a uh, statue of King George. Now that statue was torn down in the summer of 1776 before the voyage of the Bushnell turtle. And to really understand the significance of the voyage of the turtle, we have to talk a little bit about what was going on right here in 1776. So we have a pedestal here that once held the statue of the king. And I'm going to walk out of the park and we're walking toward Customs House, which you can see right in front of me, very beautiful Customs House. And hello, Bernadette. I'm fine. I have a little bit of allergy and um, cold symptoms here. So if I start to sneeze or cough or sniffle, please excuse that. But it means, as you look in front of me, that New York City is now in bloom. So the city is quite beautiful. And uh, it's just a small price to pay for the beauty of seeing everything bloom. So I'm outside of the park now. I'm going to back up and hope I don't trip on anything. And here's the fence that surrounds the Bowling Green Park. And for our imagination today, this is the only thing that is here in 1776. And if we get really close, you can see that the top of these uh, mounts have all been broken off. And that is because the night that New Yorkers tore down the statue of the king, July 9th, 1770. Excuse me here. They get this focused. They also knocked off all of the crown ornaments that once went around this fence. And all of that was melted for about 42,000 musket balls for George Washington's army. So the only thing that's here today that we have as a reference point is this fence, which was built, I think, around 1770 in order to protect the statue as the king became unpopular. And uh, eventually it didn't do such a good job. So we have the fence. And in the middle there, we'll pretend there's a pedestal where the statue once stood. Over here to my left is the beautiful one Broadway, the former home of the shipping company, International Mercantile Marine. But we're going to pretend that that is a beautiful townhome belonging to Captain Archibald Kennedy. Hi, Gwen. It's nice to see you, too. Thank you for joining me. I think you can probably hear the wind. I'm down here at the battery, so it's probably going to get quite windy. Um, so let's pretend here is a beautiful townhome on the corner, maybe a three-story mansion, the finest in all of New York as we head up the Broadway. Number one would have been the most magnificent of those. And in the summer of 1776, the Kennedys are not living there. George Washington and his officers are living there. So this is Washington's headquarters. So we have the headquarters over here where you see the Customs House. 
the beautiful customs house is the fort fort george so we have the fort here and a very interesting thing is that we know the fort was on the waterfront so we are going to have quite an interesting walk today to get ourselves out to the position where the bushnell turtle was launched and as we walk out there i'll point out some landmarks to you and i'll also tell you a little bit more about what was going on that summer so 1776 most of you know as the year of the declaration of independence and that's true um, in the summer of 1776 they are still ironing out the um, terminology of the declaration so that everyone will vote yes and on here in New York we are preparing for a massive British invasion of the city and this would have been where Washington's headquarters was and you see the little group of trees at the back of this building that is the shore for us today so right there where you see those trees there's an ice cream truck under the trees that is the shore everything beyond that for us today is landfill so Washington's headquarters was right on the Hudson River all those buildings you see don't exist yet and we're coming out here to the battery I just want to show you another another marker that shows you what things were like at the time and the back of the customs house there would have been the shore to the south so battery park much of battery park is on landfill and uh, we'll be talking about that um, here is a marker which marks the position where the flagpole stood at the battery at that time and there's a little bit here about um, fort Amsterdam and the surroundings back when this was the Dutch fort so this is right here at the entrance to Battery Park and you can see the monument here and it has the old seal of New Amsterdam up there no it doesn't oh yes it is sorry I had some sun glare I couldn't see it very well the seal of New Amsterdam and the symbol of New Amsterdam which was the Dutchman and the Lenape engaging in mutually beneficial and friendly trade. So there's our um, old flagpole. Now, as I continue, let's get back to the war story. So in the summer of 1776, although we are very much concerned with what's going on in Philadelphia, we are also very concerned about the massing of the armies at New York. Clearly, both sides wanted to possess New York in the case of a war for its strategic significance. Um, New York, almost right in the middle of the colonies, accessible directly from the Atlantic Ocean and through the Hudson and East Rivers, providing access up to New England and the interior of, of the colony. So very important, especially for England, who really needs a base of operations since they're fighting a war away from home. So England has identified the island of Manhattan as what they want to occupy as their base of operation. Not only that, but there's something else going on in the Parliament, and that is that the Minister of War, Lord Germain, understands that it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to break the will of the colonists. That the colonists are armed, they are determined, they're fighting for their homeland, and that the best way to break their will is to destroy their army as soon as possible. So the plan is to deploy to New York, lure Washington and the Continentals and the militias into New York, surround the city with the, with the Navy, bring in ground troops or army and smash Washington here in New York. So that is about to happen, although you may know that it's not going to turn out exactly the way the English thought. So I think that right about here, we are likely at the original shoreline. And the top of the building you see there would have been the top, is, is the top of the building where Washington's headquarters was. Of course, it wasn't that tall. So I think I'm just about where the shore was at the time this whole scene um, unfolded in 1776. But you can see that we still have quite a ways to walk. So let's keep heading out to the harbor. So now, the King's Army is on Staten Island out there in the harbor. You'll see that in a moment. And Washington's army is deployed here on the island of Manhattan. In July, 
a massive naval invasion came to New York. The largest England would, England would launch until World War I. It's estimated that about 500 warships came in and surrounded the city of New York. So we had ships in the Atlantic Ocean, ships in the Long Island Sound, and ships in New York Harbor. The only Navy America has at that time are a few converted merchant ships, one of them commanded by the great Captain John Paul Jones. And Captain Jones is out in the Long Island Sound with his ship harassing British ships as best to his ability, but he really is only an annoyance to them and, and really isn't doing anything to stop them. He's just annoying them more than anything. And of course, we have no way to fight this Navy. So things are looking pretty bleak for the Americans. Right in front of me is Castle Clinton, which some of you may have visited. And I just want to tell you that when Castle Clinton was built in the early 1800s, I think it was around 1812 or so, it was out in the water. You would be walking on a walkway from the shore behind me out to Castle Clinton. It was a very popular place to walk on nice sunny days. So as you can see, the landfill has expanded out beyond even Castle Clinton. And we're coming up onto the shore. So General Washington is at his headquarters at One Broadway. He has a massive, massive uh, military deployment going on on Staten Island, both English and Hessian soldiers. And now he has this massive naval deployment that has entered New York Harbor under the command of um, Admiral, Sir, Ad Admiral Lord Richard Howe, or Black Dick as he was also known. And uh, Lord Howe, by the way, anchored his ship, the Eagle, probably about halfway between here and the buildings you see at the shore, right in front of General Washington's headquarters. So for a brief time in the summer of 1776, the two highest ranking commanders were pretty much staring at each other face to face. Um, His Excellency Commander General George Washington and Lord Admiral Richard Howe right here in New York. Both sides now preparing for what will be known as the Battle of New York. And we're gonna walk out here a little bit. Where am I going? I have to get my bearings straight. It looks like they're doing some restoration here on, on Castle Clinton. If you can see through the mesh, I don't know if you can really see through it that well, but it looks like they're doing some much needed restoration on that structure. So that's nice to see. You can also see the Battery Park. Battery Park City comes way out here as well. So this is all man-made, all landfill. And here we are, we're almost up to the shore. And you're going to be able to see the Statue of Liberty out there in a moment and Staten Island. So what is poor General Washington to do? He doesn't have any way to fight off a Navy like this. As I mentioned, John Paul Jones and some other captains are harassing ships in the Long Island Sound, but that's not really making any difference. Once in a while, they might send a barge out to hopefully engage the British ships, maybe set them on fire. They would send some burning barges out, try to set them on fire and cause as much mischief as possible. But really the harbor was full of ships and this has changed a bit since I was here last for security reasons. I'm gonna see where I have to go so that I can get right out there at the uh, fence line by the harbor so that you can get a really good view of the harbor and the size of it. And while I'm walking, you can see the beautiful greenery and flowers here in Battery Park. If I use my gimbal right, you might see them. And uh, so thus the um, sneezing and coughing and hacking. <laughs> and I want to get out here. You can see, you can see the water now. And it looks like I may not be able to get out there. Oh, yes, I can. I see a way through getting used to looking at the camera and looking at where I'm walking. So let's see, if we look out here, I think right between those pillars, if I enlarge this a bit, whoo, where is my gimbal going? There it is. Right between the pillars, I think you can see the Statue of Liberty out there. And it's really not as far as it looks on this camera. And to the left of the Statue of Liberty, you can see Staten Island. So that kind of blue haze of a hill is Staten Island back there. And uh, Staten Island is where the British troops are in the summer of 1776. By the way, let's, let me get that 
you see the Statue of Liberty there? Where the Statue of Liberty is was something called Bedloe's Island. And at that time, there was a ship out there called the Duchess of Gordon, where the royal governor and mayor of New York were exiled by the summer of 1776, exiled out there nearly a year and a half as the Sons of Liberty threw them off of the island. So they're trying to run the government on behalf of the crown from a ship all the way out there where the Statue of Liberty is. The British forces are over there on Staten Island. There's Staten Island. And of course, you can guess that those uh, officers like General William Howe are heading over to the Duchess of Gordon to get information that might help them plan their invasion of the town. And I'm going to walk out to the shore. Of course, if you have any questions, please ask me. I can see the screen pretty well today. And you're getting an idea. I'm, I'm walking along here also so that you can get an idea. Let's see. Okay, this is where I want to be. All right, much better. So here we are. And I can point out some landmarks for you now. So straight ahead out there is Staten Island. To the right, you can see the Statue of Liberty. To the left over there is Governor's Island. And this is a pretty big harbor, right? Between Governor's Island and Staten Island. If I enlarge this, you can see the Verrazano Narrows or the Narrows, which is the little waterway between Brooklyn and Staten Island. So all of this harbor, as far as you can see, is filled with British ships. To the right over there where you see the buildings is New Jersey. There were so many ships in the harbor in 1776 that a gentleman from Brooklyn said it looked like you could walk from Brooklyn over there to New Jersey across the decks of the ships and not touch water. Another gentleman said that when the ships were lit up in the harbor at night, it looked like all of London was afloat in New York Harbor. So this gives you an idea of the size of the massing of the ships as the summer went by. So General Washington is back there. And of course, I'm just going to give you a view of the beautiful skyline from here. Of course, he wasn't there because none of it was there yet. But we'll just imagine he was back there behind all those buildings at his headquarters trying to figure out what to do. And um, someone, an officer from Connecticut, told him that he knew of these two brothers from Connecticut who were inventors. Their name was Bushnell. And they had invented some sort of underwater device, some sort of underwater device that could carry a man underwater and that he should send for them. And Washington, of course, having nothing to lose at this point, said, okay, um, have these two guys come and see me. So to New York arrived the Bushnell brothers with their device called the turtle. And the turtle, you might know if you saw my picture I posted of it, looked like a giant wooden egg. I've seen reproductions of it, and I think it probably is about seven or eight feet tall and if you open it up you know like you would open an egg in half you would look inside and you'd see there's a spot for someone to sit and some pedals like bicycle pedals that would that would drive a a type of fan or a propeller and propel the turtle through the water now it would fit one man it actually had a filament inside that would light up the interior. It even had some sort of depth meter. It had a couple things inside invented by Benjamin Franklin. And I, I'm looking at Governor's Island there. And to the left over there is Brooklyn, the bigger buildings. And you can see a ship coming in from the harbor. Beautiful day here today. Um, so one guy could sit in there and he could pedal himself around. There were some portals so that he could see what he was doing. There was kind of an air snorkel up out of the top to provide air so you could breathe. And uh, the turtle also had a mechanism for attaching a barrel full of gunpowder to the hull of a ship, a bomb, or maybe a manual torpedo. And the idea was the person propelling the turtle would go up next to a ship, um, turn a series of cranks that would then attach the, the, the explosive filled barrel to the side of the ship. And when the barrel detached from the turtle, it would then ignite the, a, a slow burning fuse, giving the, um, 
giving the what captain of the turtle i guess the pilot of the turtle an opportunity to get away before it exploded and there's the statue of liberty out there and ellis island over there with some construction going on so very nice view and here comes the staten island ferry is coming in so they decided to deploy this in the summer of 1776 against the british except the only guy who really knew how to operate this thing one of the bushnell brothers got sick and couldn't do it so they asked for a volunteer and the volunteer was a sergeant named ezra lee so they trained sergeant lee in the use of the turtle and i think they dropped it in the water you know somewhere around i don't know somewhere around where we're standing so out here from a ship I think they deployed it or they might have dropped it in around in Brooklyn and Ezra Lee's job was to paddle over to the um, flagship of the fleet the Eagle which would be way behind those buildings those beautiful buildings above us where it was anchored by one Broadway attach the bomb um, take off and blow a hole into the hull of the flagship of of the British fleet, Admiral Howe's ship. Um, so he dropped him in the water and it took, he took off and he said that he paddled all night. There were so many ships. He said he had trouble finding the eagle. He said he looked all night and he ultimately found the eagle. Well, when he pulled up to the eagle, for some reason, the barrel would not attach to the side of the eagle. He tried and tried and he couldn't get his bomb attached to the eagle. He said by then the sun was coming up and he was afraid he would be noticed. So instead, he took off paddling away. And somehow, some guys over here at Governor's Island, some British soldiers on Governor's Island, looking through a, an early form of a telescope or binoculars, right, saw what they said, some evil, unknown, you know, rebel device floating around in the water. What they call it, a cruel Yankee trick, they said. And so they got into a boat and paddled out to see what it was. But when they saw it, having never seen anything like it, they took off and went back to Governor's Island. Well, Sergeant Lee was terrified by then, so he released, he released his bomb and paddled in the opposite direction out there further into the harbor. But the bomb floated in the direction that you happen to see the Staten Island Ferry moving right now. And it floated right up over there into where the harbor joins with the East River and it exploded, sending a column of water 200 feet into the air. Well, that sounds appropriate, doesn't it? <laughs> Whatever they're doing over there, 200 feet into the air. It was such a huge explosion that troops over in Brooklyn under command of General Israel Putnam leaped up and down cheering, thinking they exploded a British ship. And although they didn't hit any British ships, they did cause enough confusion that the British began moving the fleet further out into the harbor. So that was the first non-successful voyage of the Bushnell turtle. The turtle survived. The turtle survived and um, it was not deployed again because it sunk while being transported, I think, to Philadelphia on another ship. And that ship was sunk and the Bushnell turtle with it. So the first voyage of a submarine ever known right here in New York Harbor, the Bushnell turtle. And although it didn't stop the fleet, it sure did frighten the fleet um, into thinking, you know, the Americans um, had something, you know, completely different that no one ever, that no one at that time understood. And I like to tell the story because it really is first a story about how necessity makes people invent things and about how it's really a story of American ingenuity isn't it that idea that the Americans will persist and persist and persist until they find something that works and that was the story of the Bushnell turtle um, there are a few replicas of the turtle around the country that you can see I posted a picture when they had one at the New York Historical Society I also saw one at the Intrepid Museum um, and that one happened to be open and you could see it. And I'll tell you, I would not have gotten into that thing. So Sergeant Ezra Lee was quite a brave young man. And there's the Statue of Liberty. Get my camera studied so you can see it really nicely out there in the harbor. Beautiful day. The water is nice and uh, nice and quiet today. The waves are nice and smooth. So try to imagine this whole harbor filled with British warships. And the British warships, by the way, moved in carrier groups 
like we have today. Of course, they didn't have aircraft carriers, but similar to battle groups that we have today with bigger ships that were battleships or ships of the line, as they would call them. They also had troop transport ships and they had smaller ships that were much more deadly and faster. And they all moved together in formation, um, the forerunner of the way our Navy uh, moves around the globe today. And the British, I should say, did have the most advanced Navy at that time next to France. Um, and it was the French Navy who would arrive in America to help us out that year. So that is the story of the Bushnell Turtle. There's the Ellis Island Ferry right there with uh, Jersey City in the background. And I often stand here and wonder what all these guys would think about the harbor if they saw it today and saw a beautiful um, New York City behind it. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'll look to see if you've asked any. Um, let's see. I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm feeling really good out here in the sun at beautiful Battery Park. One of my favorite spots, Battery Park. Look at that. Such a beautiful view of the skyline from down here. So that is the story of the Bushnell turtle. Let's see. Oh, I've got somebody. How many... How many ships do I think were ported? Here in New York, it's, it's hard to say. The estimate is that in the harbor alone, there were 500 ships um, in, in sail here um, that had arrived from Britain. Uh, they, Britain deployed ships from Canada, from the Korea, Caribbean, and also from the British Islands, um, diverted everything over here. Um, there was one eyewitness who talked about, I think it's in August, just before the battle began, that another carrier group, uh, a carrier or another battle group arrived from the Battle of Charleston under command, you're going to love this person's name, under the command of Sir Peter Parker. <laughs> really was his name and that when the ships came in they couldn't believe that they actually fit another battle group of ships among the ships that were here they also said they could see the damage to the ships they could see the tears in the sails and some of the hull damage that had occurred to those ships in the battle in, in Charleston as they came up to join the fleet here in New York and I should say that Admiral Howe did spend his time um, in his stateroom on the Eagle he wasn't he wasn't a social butterfly as his uh, brother William Howe was um, William was out there let me see if I can it's kind of misty but William Howe was out there for most of the summer out on Staten Island um, I'm not sure which house he procured as his headquarters out there but he was out there on Staten Island for the summer as they were getting ready to invade New York by way of Brooklyn um, there was some sort of periscope if you look at if you look at uh, I'll post when I get back to the office I'll post the drawings of the turtle the schematics and you can see there is something similar to a periscope that probably operated with a mirror I know there were a number of things on board that were Benjamin Franklin's inventions so you know that might have been one of Franklin's inventions I think that the filament that lighted the interior was definitely Franklin's invention so it did incorporate some of uh, um, Dr. Franklin's uh, devices that were new at the time and innovative Yes, there were repairs of ships that took place here. If we were to travel, you know, up the East River over there, about a mile north up the East River, um, there were ship repair docks, dyed, dry docks located there. And that's about where Chinatown is today. Those, of course, were American docks, but, you know, the British are going to take them over and use them throughout the war. So repairs might have been made there. They may have made some repairs over there in Elizabeth, New Jersey. You can kind of see some of the cranes over there in Elizabeth, if I can make this big enough. Um, behind the Statue of Liberty, you can see the cranes of Elizabeth, New Jersey over there. There were dry docks there. I am not sure if the British took that port or if the Americans held that port. If someone knows, you can let me know. But if the British took that port, they would have used dry dock there as well um, to repair their ships throughout um, the Revolutionary War. Um, but they definitely used the docks on the east side of Manhattan Island. No, they didn't make any more turtles. Um, that turtle was the only one the Bushnell brothers made. And um, they did go on, though, to use the idea of the bomb in the Battle of Philadelphia, which they referred to as the Battle of the Kegs, where they realized they could use the keg idea. And what they did was they floated kegs full of gunpowder out among the British ships, and they shot them 
in order to explode them. And there is a ballad about the Battle of Philadelphia called the Battle of the Kegs, all about using those explosive kegs to try to uh, alight British ships on fire. So that was the takeaway from the Bushnell turtle, that the turtle itself may not have been something they wanted to do again, but they did learn that the explosive kegs could be very useful, and they deployed those um, throughout the war. So that was a, a new weapon. Um, we might call it an early version of a torpedo. So of course they needed some good sharpshooters, right, to shoot those kegs, um, which we had, didn't we? We had the sharpshooters, but the British did not, as we had riflemen and the English did not. Um, the gentleman on the frontier of America invented the rifle and the English did not have the rifle yet. So we had a bit of uh, weapons superiority over them in that area. And uh, a very good gentleman from the frontier who were excellent shots. So thanks very much for joining me with this story about the Bushnell turtle. Oh, I should add, I almost forgot about this. This was some number of years ago, right around when I started doing my tours in 2005, that a bunch of guys over there in Brooklyn, some artists made a replica of the Bushnell turtle and they got in it and started paddling around near Governor's Island and they found themselves arrested by the Coast Guard because the Coast Guard didn't know what the heck the thing was either. So in a great replay of 1776, they were arrested by the Coast Guard, pulled out of it, the thing was confiscated by the Coast Guard. And then when they realized it was just a group of artists trying to reenact the voice Voyage of the Bushnell turtle, um, they released everyone and um, and released um, the Bushnell replica back into their possession. So that was kind of a crazy story where um, a bunch of reenactors didn't tell anyone what they were up to and wound up probably involved in more of a realistic reenactment of the event than they had ever planned would happen. Let me see. Oh, you were here for the bicentennial. Someone told me that they thought they did a reenactment of the Bushnell turtle during the bicentennial. Um, they did do a reenactment that year of the Sons of Liberty tearing down the statue of King George III, which I'm going to announce a little early that we will be doing this year here in New York as well. And I hope you'll be um, joining me um, for that. So here's one final look at Governor's Island and Staten Island. And I'll say goodbye to you guys for now and the Staten Island Ferry. Of course, the only way to end, there it goes. So one last view of the harbor. Thank you all for joining me. And I hope some of you will join me Thursday night for my talk about my book, Theodosia Burr, Teen Eyewitness to the Founding of the New Nation at the Robert Chancellor Robert R. Livingston um, Library of the Grand Lodge of Freemasons. And of course, I'll be back Friday as Mrs. Q. So thank you all very much for joining me. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you all again soon.